This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Your friendly neighborhood store, stocked with snacks and meals galore. Staff ask you how your day is going when you walk in the door, and they even offer to help you find that package of chocolate chips you've been craving all day. You feel good when you enter the store, and you feel even better when you walk out. At least, that's the image and atmosphere that Trader Joe's tries to curate in every one of their over 500 stores spanning the United States. And this friendly vibe seems to be paying off. Trader Joe's has a cult following. In New York City, customers queue up on massive lines just to bask in the Trader Joe's energy. Well, it's that and the fact that Trader Joe's has tightly curated their labels and food options to seem like they're a cheap yet local, handcrafted, and environmentally friendly choice. But I've always wondered, are they? Today, we are going to look behind the popularity of the Trader Joe's brand to answer that simple question. Is Trader Joe's actually environmentally friendly? Before we dive into that question, I want to be transparent. I worked at Trader Joe's two years ago to support myself while starting this channel. As a crew member, I saw the company's practices and ethical models firsthand. Obviously, the experience differs from store to store, but they did give good benefits if you worked full time, they made the effort to make sure you felt welcome among the crew, and some of the managers looked out for you. But at the end of the day, Trader Joe's is still a large supermarket chain. I worked from 4 p.m. to 12 a.m., most of the time stocking shelves in the frozen food section. It was tiring and mind-numbing at times, but some people loved it, others didn't. And Trader Joe's friendly vibe can only extend so far as they scale up. Striking a balance between running 500 plus stores and seeming like a local community grocer is what Trader Joe's does best and what has led to their popularity. Because let's face it, TJ's is not your local co-op market. It's a large corporation ultimately looking out for its bottom line, albeit in a unique customer first way. And this difficult balancing act seems to seep into Trader Joe's's approach to the environment. Trader Joe's's sustainable efforts really boil down to four main categories, packaging, waste, sourcing, and energy. So let's start with packaging, which until recently ran rampant through the Trader Joe's brand. If you want some Honeycrisp apples, you'll get a side of plastic. Fancy some organic peppers? Have some plastic wrap with that. The problem got so bad that Greenpeace drafted a petition for Trader Joe's to change their packaging ways, and over 100,000 people signed it. But here's the good part. Trader Joe's seems to listen to its customers. The company eliminated 6 million pounds of plastic packaging from its stores. They're replacing styrofoam trays with compostable ones, doing away with excess like their mesh pouches for garlic, and seeking ways to, as Matt Sloan from the Trader Joe's podcast says, choose packaging that can be realistically recycled. It's one thing to say that something can be technically recycled, but what's actually feasibly recycled is a pretty small number of materials. To do this, Trader Joe's replaced virgin plastic with 100% recycled PET number one plastic in 20 of their items in the past year, which will remove over 500,000 pounds of virgin plastic from their stores annually. And in total, they recycled over 450 million pounds of materials, including cardboard, plastic wrap, plastic buckets, and damaged pallets in 2019. While this is a great start, it's less of a shift away from packaging and more of a switch towards different materials. The packaging is still there. It's just a little easier to recycle or compost. If Trader Joe's is really interested in minimizing packaging waste, they would install solutions like bulk bins that do away with the necessity of packaging altogether. Granted, bulk bins do present several new food safety dilemmas that Trader Joe's would have to tackle. But if Trader Joe's wants to truly address customer concerns about packaging, bulk bins are a necessary step. Packaging is a complex area, and it's hard to do away with everything all at once. For many perishable items, for example, packaging extends their shelf life. 
So addressing packaging means running headfirst into Trader Joe's second environmental area, food waste. Food waste is where Trader Joe's shines. The harsh truth of a grocery store is that many items just won't make it off the shelves before they reach their expiration date. Instead of throwing away food that is perfectly edible but not suitable for the storefront, Trader Joe's donates it to local food banks and community nonprofits. In 2019, they donated $384 million of food and beverages, which according to Trader Joe's is about 78 million pounds of food or 65 million meals served to those in need. As a crew member, I saw this firsthand. Every day we pulled bread off the shelves because it was about to reach its expiration date or pulled apples off the stands that had some soft spots. Those items would then go directly into donation bags. At the end of the night, a volunteer from the local food pantry would pull up with a van and we would pile the bags into the trunk. And all that food would make it to those in need. But even before food makes it onto the shelves, Trader Joe's does an excellent job of efficiently tracking and managing the flow of food into its stores. According to the Trader Joe's website, in 2019, approximately 0.5% of Trader Joe's products were unable to be sold to customers, donated to their food recovery partners, or composted. To put that in perspective, the USDA has reported that 10% of food in America is lost at the retail level. This is in part due to the company's efficient distribution process. Every day, a truck arrives with goods needed to restock the shelves. In most cases, that food goes straight onto the shelves rather than collecting dust in a back room somewhere. Category manager for produce Jack Salomon hints at this efficiency mindset when he talks about the size of stores. Trader Joe's, either, either by accident or in their wisdom, makes their back rooms really small, makes their coolers really small. Yeah, we just don't have room to hold it. Essentially, Trader Joe's has streamlined the trail from farm to shelf so that food is rarely sitting in the back room for a long time. As a result, they've drastically decreased the amount of time products sit on the shelves, which means they've reduced how much food goes to waste. In order to create the efficient relationship between their supply and distribution efforts, Trader Joe's needs to have firm control over where their food comes from. And that's where the third element of their sustainability efforts come in, sourcing. Unlike food waste, Trader Joe's is light on the details of how and where they source their food. In part, this is out of necessity. Their popularity relies on the allure of the Trader Joe's label. There are very few brand names in sight when you walk into a TJ's. But this secrecy means that it's very hard to figure out exactly where the food is coming from. An article from Eater unearthed the brands behind some of Trader Joe's labels through FDA recall documents. They assert that while many Trader Joe's items come from small scale suppliers, some don't. At some point, Naked Juice, a PepsiCo subsidiary, provided Trader Joe's with some of their smoothies. Wonderful Pistachios supplied the company with pistachios, and Stacy's Pita Chips made the Trader Joe's Pita Chips. This makes finding ethical and environmentally responsible products extremely difficult. That Trader Joe's private labeled item could very well be a PepsiCo product in disguise. While not all products are sourced from big food conglomerates, for some items, the Trader Joe's private label is merely a form of greenwashing, replacing brand names with Trader Joe's own brand to reach customers that might otherwise not want to buy the brand's product for ethical or health-based reasons. Transparency is essential when it comes to shopping for food, and Trader Joe's just doesn't supply it. Because we have no idea who makes the food that Trader Joe's sells, we just have to blindly trust that it is made ethically. And finally, energy and emissions. Much like Trader Joe's sourcing strategy, the company is pretty tight-lipped on this. In my research, I couldn't find any reference to a zero carbon plan or any emissions targets goals. As a corporation with over 500 stores, this is a huge strike against Trader Joe's. Companies that large need to have a public, transparent, and aggressive plan in place to address the emissions that they generate. And Trader Joe's just hasn't done that. Whether that means they haven't set targets or just haven't released them to the public, it doesn't matter. 
even Amazon has a publicly accessible climate action plan. For a store that leans into a local, quirky, community-driven aesthetic, this is a noticeable absence. Because caring about customers also means caring about the environments that surround them. In short, Trader Joe's is a mixed bag when it comes to the environment. They excel at things like food waste, but are noticeably lacking on the emissions front. But I think what makes Trader Joe's a promising company in terms of sustainability is its willingness to react to customers' demands quickly and drastically, as in the case of packaging. Indeed, that's part of why the store is so popular. That being said, Trader Joe's should be leading the charge on climate action and not be pulled along by its customers. If Trader Joe's truly wants to be that neighborhood store, then it has to care about its community, both locally and globally. And that means addressing climate change with emissions targets and transparently pushing suppliers to be more sustainable in their practices. So at the end of the day, Trader Joe's has garnered such loyal supporters and popularity because it's found the perfect middle ground between providing the value of a store like Walmart while exuding the handmade local aesthetic of a co-op grocer. But make no mistake, Trader Joe's is driven by customer demands, not ethical choices. Mark Gardner, author of Build a Brand Like Trader Joe's, sums up this reality best on his blog. He writes, Trader Joe's is definitely not a company like Patagonia that strives for complete ethical transparency, but it's not worse than most other $8 billion companies. On issues like farm workers' rights or the sustainability of fisheries, Trader Joe's does what it's pushed to do and usually acts when it's been shamed in the media. A week ago, I got an email from my dad. It was simple enough. He was just asking me to click on a link. But as I looked harder at what he said, I realized it was a trap. That wasn't my dad's email, and that certainly wasn't a link I should be clicking on. Which got me thinking, with working from home the new norm for me, if my apartment's internet isn't protected, then my personal information isn't either. If someone really wanted to, they could swoop in and steal my financial records and passwords with ease. I'm essentially a sitting duck, even in the comfort of my own home. That is, until recently because now I've started to use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN has been the perfect solution to my privacy problems. With a click of a button, ExpressVPN both protects my privacy and encrypts my data so I can browse the internet with peace of mind. Essentially, ExpressVPN guards my online activities from data mining and hackers alike by hiding my IP address and employing encryption methods used by security experts worldwide. This means that I don't have to keep seeing those eerily specific advertisements on social media. So if you're interested in protecting yourself or your data, I'd highly recommend going to expressvpn.com OCC or clicking the link in the description box below to find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Hey everyone, Charlie here. I hope you are all doing well. This video was also made possible by my Patreon supporters. Every month, they pledge a certain amount of money that gives me the needed consistency and foundation to make videos like these. So thank you so much to my supporters, and thank you for watching. I'll see you in two weeks.